And so I've always wanted to give a, a coherent set of teachings that have to do with what happens after awakening. And so I'm really happy that I have an opportunity to do this. Now, some people may think, I haven't had one of those glimpses. I haven't, I don't think I've really awakened. Or some people may not even be sure if what they've experienced is awakening or not awakening. But whatever the case may be, rest assured that what happens after that glimpse, whether it's a glimpse or we are abiding in that state of awakening continuously, the process that unfolds after awakening is also very relevant to what happens before awakening. Because essentially the process isn't different. It's just after awakening, it's just that the process is happening from a different perspective, from a different view. After awakening, the process of spirituality happens from a bird's eye view rather than from a ground's eye view. So I think that whether you've awakened or think you've awakened or not, it really doesn't matter so much. But saying that, these teachings, what I want to present here, is really directed towards those who've had some awakening, whether it's non-abiding or abiding. Because there's very little information out about what happens after awakening. Very, very little. The information that is there about what happens after awakening is usually not very public. It's, it's very, very private. And which means it's often talked only between teacher and student, and very rarely is it talked in public. The problem with that is, is a lot of people are having these moments now, or having glimpses, or, or actually are living from a much more awakened place. And yet, there's no real coherent teaching about it. There's very few people talking about it in a way that really makes sense to them, that, that really talks from their perspective, or that seems particularly coherent. And so that's one of my aims, is to present a series of teachings which really are sort of a welcoming to that new world, that new perception of oneness, and to start to address what may be happening from that state of oneness. Now the danger of this is obvious or to some it may be obvious. The danger of what happens after awakening is that the teachings are taken on too much of a conceptual level. I often tell my own students, my teachings are not meant to be coherent statements of truth. I'm not teaching theology or philosophy. I'm not teaching Buddhism or any kind of ism at all. That's not my interest at all. My teachings are actually strategies strategies for awakening, or strategies to help, help one with what happens after awakening. So these teachings aren't teachings that are meant to be understood simply on the mental level, on the conceptual level, and applied from the top down, as it were. These teachings are more suggestions. They're strategies. In many ways, the life after awakening, one of the most important things to what unfolds after awakening is to have some orientation to where you are. Because quite contrary to what many of us expected, which was we thought when awakening happened, if it ever happened, that as soon as awakening happened, everything would be clear. Everything. And actually, what you find out, that everything isn't clear. The one thing that's clear with a true and authentic awakening is reality. Who and what we are is clear. There's no longer doubt about that. There's no longer a question about it. It's a done deal. In a very real sense, one of the hallmarks of a true awakening is the end of seeking. You no longer feel the thrust and the push and the pull of seeking. The seeker literally disappears as the virtual reality it was. The seeker and the seeking has in many senses accomplished its task. It's provided the necessary momentum to help propel consciousness or spirit out of its identification with the dream state and helped it to return back to its natural state of being. 
But once this awakening happens, one of the things that's very curious for a lot of people is that their seeking disappears. Now, if it's uh, the abiding type of awakening, the awakening that really doesn't go away, then the seeker and the seeking completely dissolves. If the awakening is of a non-abiding character, which again means that almost the aperture of reality opened for a moment or a day or a week only to close somewhat again. In those cases, the seeker and the seeking may not be completely dissolved, but it's in the process of being dissolved. And this itself is quite a transformation in one's life. Because for people in spirituality, a lot of times their whole identity has been wrapped up in the seeking. Their life has literally been defined by spiritual seeking, by the yearning for God or union or enlightenment or awakening. And all of a sudden, awakening happens. And the person they thought they were, the seeker, the seeking, and the whole egoic structure, the spiritual ego get, gets built up around it, is suddenly gone, is seen to be what it was, possibly useful, but now seen as rather meaningless and not useful, and falls away. In many senses, once awakening happens, once the honeymoon of awakening is over, and the honeymoon of awakening is the initial aha, the initial bliss of realization, the joy of the awakening itself, the utter relief of no longer being burdened by a false perception of things, by this immense burden of separateness and all of the conditioning that we formerly identified with and thought we were and allowed to define us. And at once, with this peering beyond the veil of illusion, all that is dropped, maybe permanently, maybe momentarily. But either way, that's, there's sort of a honeymoon, a great aha, incredible release, incredible relief. That release and that relief may itself be momentary. The release and the relief may last for weeks or months. In some cases, it may last a few years, where you'll literally be sort of just basking in the bliss and the joy and the release of your own being, of what you truly are. And that's what I call the honeymoon period of awakening.